here? Okay. Still sounds good. All right, little thing. Good. All right, so um, the song it starts off with an augmented chord. Okay, that chord didn't exist until the major scale, the uh, minor scale, natural minor scale was tweaked into the harmonic minor scale. Then you could build this chord out of a scale. It's like an F shape, except you bring it up. Okay. And it's like a C chord too. Like a except, C chord, but just that, the difference on that. the yeah on the G. But this is functioning actually more like an E chord. It's bringing us into the A. Okay. okay. Um, because it's got two notes of E major, by the way. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Now I'm borrowing with the middle. Okay. So anyway, this is uh, right here. This one chord already kind of suggests the blues. Why? Because if we have A minor pentatonic, get that C uh, C natural note where the key of A major is a C C sharp natural. Okay. All right. So again, we're we're pitting the C against the A to get that blues sound. All right. So we got a one chord to E five F sharp minor. D seven. That's the four chord. A B C one two three four A B C D. And we made it seventh. Again, a little marker saying the blues. This song is out and out bluesy without following a 12 bar blues progression. Right. That's totally possible to do. All right. You can get a blues effect just by using uh, certain uh, chords, actually. Just literally certain chords. You just certain chords, you turn <coughs> into sevenths, and, and blues happens. Yeah. You know? Well, that brings up that other thing that, you know, you place a huge amount of importance on the blues, but. So many people, I think, do just think of that as the twelve-bar, <clears throat> the twelve-bar. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, yeah, yeah, right. You, in other words, they think of it literally as a twelve-bar yeah. progression with slight tweaks, you know, here and there. Well, the interesting thing to me is that more and more, if you do some listening and actually pay attention to it, like you do, uh, you you see the blues has a phenomenal amount of different rhythms, different stress. Different stresses mm -hmm. on, on certain uh, notes, certain beats, whatever, that are not just 12 bar blues at all. They're yeah, absolutely, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, uh, you, the blues, uh, you could blues, you could blues up a ballad just by, you know, sticking in little minor pentatonic notes into, yeah. into a ballad, you know, where normally it would sound really, really straight, like very Euro. Uh, but yeah, you can, it's possible to do. I think maybe the calling would be a whole album of children's lullabies done in blues <laughs> fashion. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, they, they might sleep weirdly. <laughs> Lulla blues. <laughs> well, yeah, because the blues encapsulates, you know, the blues chord itself encapsulates the three types of chords, major, minor, and seventh, all rolled into one chord. Yeah. Right there, you know. So it, if you t think of it in terms of mood, it's it's happy, sad, and unstable. I mean, that's those are the three moods of those three chords, you know. So, uh, yeah, the kid's going to sleep not, you know, really well. <laughs> but you know, blues has this incredible healing effect. I was at a student last night who uh, is going through some difficulty right now, and and you know he talk to me and he was depressed and stuff like this and I understood because I go through this similar stuff you know so he talked for a good 20 minutes about it and then I said well you know what let's kind of knock some of this stuff out of you let's have it do some blues let's just play some blues you know and by the end of the lesson he was literally smiling you oh. know saying you know that really did me some good you know it really did yeah. me some good you know the blues is a wonderful transformative tool for the musician himself yeah if not for the audience you know it really does, you know, Larry Carlton was strong on, on that. And he, he One thing he said was, you know, if you're going to do a show or something like that, start off with the blues because it's just a great way to unwind, and it really is. Yeah. Just, you don't have to play great. All you have to do is play your feeling, and that's the beauty of it. You know. In this song, when all of a sudden he vocally oh. decides to go yeah. bat crap, there's a certain release about that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know? That, that further sort of heightens the tune, really. Yeah, in fact, uh, speaking of release, this is a different subject about release in the song, but... Um, yeah. We go to that... Uh, all right, so... Um, 
I'll never make it alone. And then all of a sudden it releases there. It says becomes softer and easier there. Yeah, it does. And that's because why is because we're going to European harmony, which is is based on there's no tension comparatively when you compare a Europe, European harmony to blues harmony. Oh, yeah? There's a lot less tension in European harmony. Well. Now you could see this functioning in a song like Stormy Monday Blues, okay. right? Um, call it Stormy Monday. We got a four dominant seven. Mm, Tuesday, Tuesday is just like the that. Sound. And then they go up this little fancy half step, which I like. That's a that's a tritone substitute. Okay. okay. Call it Stormy Monday. Now Tuesday is just as bad. Now here comes the European harmony. Here, it might that eases the whole thing up suddenly. Sure. It's like, like, and then we've got a blues chord there, and then we're back into European. So, uh, again, very similar. What you know, what happens here in Stormy Monday is going up the chord family template, which mm -hmm. there is no chord family template in the blues. You know, there's there's one, four, and five dominant seven. Right. That's as close as you could come to a template for the blues. But this, you know, you're doing the normal European harmony, the standard way that it was laid out by Pythagoras, you know. So it, it kind of alternates between <clears throat> this sort of blues, dissonant, <clears throat> aggressive, whatever, and then this, this relaxed... Easing up. Yeah, it, <clears throat> easier on the ear, perhaps. Yeah. That sort of thing. Well, when you think about harmony, the art of harmony is the art of tension and release. Right. That's all it is. You, you're creating up some tension and then you relax it. It gives you this ah feeling. And that's part of the beauty of, of the whole thing. It's like life itself, you know. Life sucks, but then you get this great moment. You know? Yeah. Um, generally, mine just sucks, but, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and <laughs> I can that, laugh about that, it at that, least, I, you know. That, that's negative, Vinny. <laughs> Everybody knows. And then uh, he releases with a laugh. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Tension release. So, um, yeah, you have tension release. Now, when you con conglomerate within one piece of music, blues and European harmony, it's it's similar to the old-fashioned European thing. When Europeans were trying to create tension, they'd put a seventh chord in. You know, okay. but they put it in the proper placement. Now, to us, our ear, that sounds very conventional. Right. But, you know, to the old school ear, there was tension there with that dominant seventh there, dominant seventh there, and then finally, ah, you know, okay. relax. And then, what would an American, what would an American blues player do that to that, to that progression? Uh, what did Might I do to that progression. I substituted the B7 for its tritone substitution, F7. Okay. Uh, and I created dominant chords out of the 1 and 4. Okay. So, yeah. So the difference, as opposed to... Yeah. All right. The American way is better. The American way as is it always super, is. uber cool. <laughs> and it definitely relates to postmodernism so well, because we do live in tense kind of... That blues chord, the dominant seventh sharp nine chord, you know, that that really does kind of encapsulate the way the world feels. You yeah. know, it feels like, you know, it's not resolved. It's like there's a lot of tension in there, and there's a lot of color at the same time. You yeah. Know? Uh, in other words, like this chord is giving you a lot of information. Well, know? and it's also the odd thing is it's it's not displeasing to the ear, really. Right. It's not. It's harm. It's harmonious, and it's uh, odd way. It's harmonious. Yeah. 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 So, again, like what I wanted to say with my comment about the Beatles and, and this, like, again, you go to old school European, it's tension release. Now, when European went over the top, you know, in the uh, late uh, 1900s, am I thinking, wow, the late 1800s, it, you know, they started getting really experimental. Since everything, like anything, went at one point, anything goes at one point. So Stravinsky, what he would do, he said he thought to himself, music is the art of tension and release. But now it's not just up to a chord anymore, because we've we've expanded to a, a complete atonality, you know. So what he would do is he'd take an entire section of music, sixteen bars that was sonorous and easy and harmonious, and then do another sixteen that was tense, and so that that's how he created the tension and release.
Is that very obvious with him, with Stravinsky? I don't know. You know, I, I just read that, you know, in one of his books, mm -hmm. one of his really pretentious books. Uh, but, <laughs> um, uh, I, I read that, that that's what he was going for. Uh, what was your question again? <clears throat> oh, is that, in other words, it was that obvious. You'd hit, you, you could hit eight bars of this and then eight bars of this different. Yeah, this, I'd have to give a listen to that wreck. kind of ear and mind, you yeah. know, because when I listen to Stravinsky, it's just an experience, you know. Yeah. It's like, I don't even think, it's just... right. This music is going. It goes beyond my music theory head. Like I can't predict that yeah. chord or this chord, which I love. You know. <laughs> you, have a, you have a new section called train wreck. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so what I was going to say was the way the Beatles did it, tension release, and they didn't even do it consciously, but it's still genius. Is that within the context of one piece of music, they would incorporate blues harmony and also incorporate European standard harmony. Okay. And uh, this is to be seen in this song. When we get to believe me when I tell you that's a lullaby right there. I'll never make it alone. And we go. Right. All right. So what's all that stuff to? Um, uh, so we have A. Oh, darling, please do E. F sharp minor. So we have one, five, six to four, but we took we create dominant seventh there. Mm -hmm. So there's the one bit, you feel the sour right there, it's like, ooh, you know? And right. then, we soften up again. B minor 7 to E7. Now E7 is natural as a 5-7 chord in the key of right. A. So it doesn't really suggest blues, it suggests European. Yeah, okay. And what we have here, this is an old... That's an old device used in the blues, and it's just climbing up the scale, A, B, C, sharp, D, D, C, sharp, B, A, A, G, sharp, F, sharp, E. Now this isn't technically a turnaround, is it? Yeah, it is a turnaround. It is? Okay. A turnaround is something that brings you back to your verse. Okay. You know? Oh, that's the simplest, yeah. That only happens when he's repeating the verse, by the way. He'll go, um... So we go back, okay. right? But the second verse, we go... Uh, mm. All right, and that A7 hails, you know what chord is coming. Yeah. You could hear it. It's... Right? Yeah. That A7 is the 5-7 of the D major chord. Okay. That is very European. It's not blues. Even though in the one position, you're creating a dominant 7, it's still not bluesy. Because this is a... This is a uh, secondary dominant leading to the four chord as we talked about okay all right and i know that sounds all wordy but you know no 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 if you go back in the lessons about secondary dominant